That didn't work out. I think my slipper clutch is too loose. sand everywhere some sand I just finished cleaning off my little razor buggy lots of sand now I'm gonna fix this one well upgrade it um, because I tried to do a um, water crossing um, hydroplaning another word for it or water skipping with this and the saddle paddle tires it worked pretty good but as soon as I hit the water the first try um, link right here to uh, this video uh it kind of not cogged out but my slipper clutch kind of slipped and then i lost all power to the wheels motor kept on going but no more power to the wheel because my slipper clutch it's the original one i had on this truck and it's three or four years old now so and i never adjusted it and I know it's a little loose, so and it was just starting to run, so it wasn't even hot yet. So as I drove the truck more and w drove it a little harder, stop, go, stop, go, it seemed to heat up a little bit and was gripping a little bit better. So near the end of the video, or um, some of the video, it actually did uh, perform way better on water um, for hydroplaning. So it was kind of fun. So what now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a... Uh, Revo upgrade slipper clutch basically you just order the Revo um, pressure plate and the clutch itself uh, the plate so there's two parts to order um, once you've done that and here's the two parts so here's the plate the part number 5351 which is the slipper a slipper pressure plate and hub so this is for the Revo but it actually fits on the slash 4x4 and stampede 4x4 the only thing you have to do is remove the other one put this one instead the other part number that you need to get I got the heavy duty one which is 5352 R I believe the other one is 5351 um, if not You'll see a blinking thing and telling you what the right part is. But this is the heavy duty one. I decided just to put it in. It was a dollar more. So basically it's the pressure plate. These are the aluminum pressure plate instead of being uh, the other one that usually comes with it. So these plates are a little bit bigger. And uh, I'll show you um, the difference between the two. Another thing that I got, because I think I did the upgrade on this a long time ago, but just in case, because it was only $6, I did get this part, which is $68.93, and that's this little uh, bear, not bearing and uh, this other uh, shim, I guess you could call it, is usually plastic, but it's better to have it in metal. So it's the bearing adapter and the... T6 aluminum part 6893 so Canadian I was looking at about uh, $27 altogether for this upgrade and it's gonna give me better punch power when I take off better stopping power also so I'll take it apart now oh, and when I take it apart I'll clean it also this is still dirty from the beach bashing so that's the big pile of sand that I got after cleaning two cars. There we go, she's all cleaned up. Took about five minutes, not even. It's still not dry over there, so I couldn't get that sand out, but it will come out once it gets dry. So basically to replace the slipper clutch, I won't bore you, you've probably seen this video lots of time, you can remove just the rear. So. Two screws to remove here. This cap's going to come off, but two screws to remove and two screws on the bottom and the whole thing just pop off and then your slipper clutch will actually just pop out. I'll take it off. I'll read it back. Okay, 
To remove uh, the slipper clutch, you do not have to take the motor out. Your meshing is okay. You'll just remove the whole rear end that's, that's going to come out. So by you not touching the motor, you won't even have to fix your mesh. So my spur gear is okay. My meshing was okay. I'll pop it back in there, but I'll do the test after, but everything should be fine. So the only thing you have to do is pull it apart. It should come out. Once you've pulled it apart, you now have two cars for the price of one. Well, actually half a car and half a car. So basically the only thing you have to do is just take this. It's so easier to do this when you got both hands. I'll take it out, but it actually comes out. But with one hand, it's kind of tough. So hold on. There we go. I did get it out. And now I got to get that bearing out of there and just put a new one. So that said, good thing I got that bearing, that uh, new bushing, it goes here. Now, what happens with these is they turn so much and you turn and you break and you turn and you break. And this causes friction where the bearing is, no matter what you do, it does do friction. After a while, this spring actually melts into this bushing. And this is what causes your slipper clutch to get looser. So people keep tightening it, keep tightening it, and, and then it just eats this away. But the best upgrade is replace this little bushing. It's a $6 part. And uh, replace that. Gives you a brand new bearing, a high-speed bearing. And then you're off to the races. So let me take this apart and show you the big difference between the two plates. So this spring and this piece of plastic actually melted so much the spring is actually stuck in there. So I might cut it, up, cut it up, doesn't matter because I do have the aluminum, aluminum replacement part that I'm going to be putting, but what I need is a spring. So I'll use a pair of pliers, take it out of there, and I'll be right back. So there you go. It actually went in there a good quarter inch almost. No wonder I had no more torque on my my wheels when I gave it power and it wasn't wheeling anymore. No more wheelies. No fun. Anyways. So here's the biggest difference is the size of the pad and the size of the wheel. So it's much bigger. It's going to give you better uh, stopping power done it on my slash and it worked way better and it actually fits all this fits on your same spur wheel and the um, sh uh, shaft also so the only thing you have to get is the packs that I told you and everything fits on the original shaft with the original spur time to put it together one thing that you have to realize is that this um, slipper clutch is actually sticking out and this one is actually sticking in so biggest difference is where that lands and if you don't want it to hit here you have to put um, come on camera you have to change it whole. There's two holes on it. So originally it was on the uh, on the one uh, that's blank right now. So I moved it up closer to the thread and that actually fixed it. So now I put it in there on the second hole and now when I put this in it actually fits in there no problem. This is as far as it goes and it will not rub on it. So you got to make sure that when you put it in you do move that little pin forward. Just as a show I put uh, the gear on top of the other one. Not the gear but the slipper clutch on top of the other one. So now I gotta try to take it off. 
with one hand. There we go. So the slipper clutch is almost the same size as the spur gear now. Pretty blue. There we go. She's all installed. She fits perfectly in there. I'll put the cap back on and I'll be done. And then I can go test it. It should wheelie now. Mm -hmm.